Yo, what's going on guys? Today's gonna be a new video again and again. But today's video is gonna be totally different from any videos I've done prior. It's gonna be more of a guide on how to properly host Ultimate Bahamut High Level as a low rank. Um, yes, this account is a low rank. In case anybody's wondering, it's a low rank account. So it'll give you a good idea on how to host your Bahamut High Levels, Ultimate Bahamut High Levels and not have to worry much about um, being a burden rather than being more helpful, even though you're not gonna be doing any real damage. Now, before we start this video, one thing I wanna mention is that I will not be doing a tier three or tier four weapon, what bars to weapon, wait, what? Uh, I won't be doing a tier three or tier four on what weapons to bar, until Full Limit Break Primal has come out. I'm waiting to see how much they boost overall so I can get a better idea of how high or how low I want to put any of the crit weapons. Um, maybe they can even jump tier one and tier two. It really depends on how big the boost is from the primals, but I just wanna take time and wait. Secondly, I will also be doing another video on what summons the Sunstone this will also be after Full Limit Break Primals, just in case any of them get a really strong active skill. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> a really, a, tr a really strong active call, and um, we'll go from there and see if any of them are worth like being on a higher rank than I was originally going to give them. But I, I am waiting to after Full Limit Break Primals. A lot of things are really based around the Primals. Um, also be me doing more videos on scale the dominion after the full minute break primal so We'll be a ton of stuff with these full minute break with these full minute break primals in the future Clearly, I can't talk but when can I ever? Anyways, let's get started with this video Now back to ultimate Bahamut high level now with hosting ultimate Bahamut high level there's a couple things that people tend to overthink one it's you do you personally need to do damage to the host not really generally even in fast optimal runs it generally it's one debuffer due to the fact that one person debuffing is a lot easier to get more dps out for the whole team and less people running into triggers all willy-nilly so generally there usually is one debuffer just to make sure that debuffs are on the boss because you do more damage with debuffs than you do without them so that's the whole point of having debuffs. And your job in this video is to be that debuffer for the team because generally at a low rank, you really don't have a ton of damage. So don't feel bad if you don't bring damage as you're supporting people through your debuffs. Another thing is that this is not a 100%, right? You can have people join your lobby who are not the strongest. Now, there'll be ways to ensure that it's more consistent by increasing your rank cap level or the rank cap um, you want. But just know, it won't always clear. It, it'll clear 99% of the time, but you know, you can have those runs where things just don't go the way you want them to. But generally, it'll clear all the time. Um, this is better than nothing. You, you either, it's either don't host it or host it and get a, have a chance at getting a gold bar. So this is all for a gold bar at the end of the day. Um, don't feel hurt if it fails. Okay, if it fails, it fails. Try not, try again next day. It's one time host per day. It's not killing you. So don't take it too, too personal if it does happen to fail because it can fail. It's not guaranteed clear, you know. Now, with that, we're going to go into party comps and team comps. So first thing at the very beginning, I'm gonna show two characters who are not worth bringing to the raid at all. If I can find them anywhere, it's one of these parties. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I'll be fine in a minute. Ah, there we go, cool, there we go. These two characters, Flare and Blizzard, they don't, their names aren't relevant. They're, they're, this is Flare and this is Blizzard. Do not bring these units to the raid. They are not worth the damage boost that they give as generally people who are doing the raid at a higher level have more than enough damage output normally what they require are debuffs and this these two characters are not what you want to bring to the raid as it hurts more than it helps unfortunately 
So just want to throw that out there. Those two don't bring them. They're not worth bringing. Secondly, we're going to be looking at class comp. The very first thing you want to look at. Why is no, why is not looking? Okay. So the very first thing you want to look at your class you're going to play. You're playing Spartan. There's no and if buts about it. You're playing Spartan. If you don't want to play Spartan, don't watch this video. You're playing Spartan. There's no way around it. I'm sorry to, if you don't like playing Spartan, you don't have a main hand for Spartan, make it work. Put any weapons you have that's a sword as a main hand or a spear. Whatever options you have, you're playing Spartan. I, I, you don't have another option. You are playing Spartan. So get that into your head. I don't want to hear, oh, what What if I have drink? No, Spartan, Spartan, Spartan. Don't ask me what if this, what if, no, no. I, I know I'm going to get that comment. Don't ask. It's Spartan and it's Spartan. That's the only option you got. You got Spartan, you're gonna play Spartan. So get used to it. And if you don't have Spartan unlock, unlock Spartan. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how the game goes. They ain't my fault the class is so good. I, I didn't make it, <laughs> but it's class you're gonna play. Now, skills you wanna bring. So first skill you wanna bring is Miserable Mist. Now, you're probably wondering why Mist. Because early in the beginning of the fight, you wanna try to land debuffs early on as generally the hardest part of the fight is the beginning part because generally there's no debuffs and it takes a little bit longer so miserable miss does help a lot at the very beginning of the fight now if you bring characters that have this you don't need to bring it but generally it's good to bring miserable mist next skill you want to bring is a extended skill extended mastery so you have options here centurion are um uh hardened shield um really depends on what characters you have and what characters you want to bring. Um, Hardened Shield is good as well, but it really depends on what units you have. This is all personal preference. There's no one pick guaranteed. Uh, personally, I'm going to go with Centurion for reasons I'll talk about earlier or later, but um, just know you also have Hardened Shield as an option. Um, it's not unlocked on its account. I'll probably it, This account doesn't have no EMP, so it's not there, but just know you have a shield as an option. Now your third skill, now this is, you have a little bit more freedom with this one and flexibility. You can, uh, if you were a person who wanted, who wanted to be more active in a raid rather than um, proactive, you know, you don't want to take turns that much. If you want to take turns, you can bring revive. Revive is a good option. If you wanted to just not do much at all, you can also bring clarity. Clarity is for people who probably don't want to take that many turns. And uh, other than those two, you can also bring substitute. Substitute for people who actually know the raid and are willing to take the turns required to be a little bit more effective. So this is for the person who really knows the raid and knows when to go and take turns. This is more for the the person with experience as somebody who's new, I'll just bring revive if you're new. Cause you're gonna end up dying cause you probably don't know what you're doing. So if you're more experienced, put in um, substitute. If you're not, just bring revive. Now, now you've got the class set up properly. Next is on to the characters. Now, with characters, this is gonna be a little bit more situational. Now, it first comes down to your LE. Recommended LE is going to be light, okay? Light has swords and they're easy to get um, for low levels. So swords are gonna be a good way to boost your overall health and allow you to take more turns and not have to worry nearly as much. Secondly, you'll be running Thor as your sub summon and Thor only boosts his light allies attack. So because you'll be running Thor as a sub, you want to bring, um, you'll, you'll want to bring light more than any other element as the other elements you won't nearly do as much damage with Thor as you would with light. But I'm gonna show you a couple options per LD. Um, fire only has two, water has a plethora because water does have a lot of debuff units. Wind has two, one is more free to play on wind, so you may likely wanna play wind. Not to mention you do, if you have monkey, you can bring monkey as well. It's really good for the raid and mist will be more likely to hit due to monkey skill three. So monkey is also a very good option here. Earth is kind of hard. Kind loses his, his viability after 50, but he's really good early on, so that's okay. The same for Medusa, she loses her viability after 50, so let's keep that in mind. 
Song is there for early paralyzed. Um, this is more for high end players though, as if you're newer, you won't have enough time to really get enough turns to hit paralyzed. But if you are more, if you are more experienced, then you want to use Song. And Dark really has no options outside of Fairy, and she faulted to the same problem as Kine and Medusa, both having the really unfair miserable mist that does become inactive after 50. So after you pick your element, um, in this account we're going to pick, I don't even know what element to pick actually. Mm, let me, let me, <laughs> I didn't really think too hard about this one, but we do it, I'll see do it live and see what, what characters we have in this account here. I'm not going to worry too much about the actual level. Um, let's see here. Let's see out of here. So we do have Song here. Song is level 80, but that's okay. So, light's an option here. We have... Hmm. Wow, we, we don't got much. <laughs> so we have Song. Song, is, we're looking like light right now. We do have the Lily. Lily's a four star though. So she doesn't gain her uh, best abilities. So we'll probably skip out on Lily. We do have Dog as well. Dog is very strong with her skill one. Hitting that debuff success rate down does allow us to hit debuffs easier. Um, everything's level one, huh? Okay, we'll probably just go with Light then. I think Light's fine. Yeah, we'll go with Light. Okay, so once you pick your LD, we're gonna, you're gonna start building your team. You wanna slot in your debuffer early on. Song 5 star or 4 star doesn't really matter much because you're not going to extend her, paral her paralysis anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Now, your other slots are generally open. Um, you may want to bring one to two debuffers if you have them, and then a tank unit. Now, the tank units really depend on what you have. I'm not going to go through each and every tank unit. That'd be ridiculous. It'll be like 10 hours. But just look at the units you have and what skills they have. Look at it. It'd also be good to look at videos online of other clears, right? Look at a video for the element you're playing to get an idea. I'm gonna go with Zoe because Zoe skill three is very strong and good enough for me. And for slot three, we'll just bring uh, part. Two. <laughs> I, I I think about bringing out know, this for the meme, but I'm not too worried about it. This brings so many else. This, 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 Small point to light, actually. Okay. Now, light. We're gonna bring John. John is for her defense now. And she has attack down as well. I think so. Her having attack and defense down is very strong, so we're gonna go with this team here. Now, back row. Back row, something you wanna bring as well, as you're likely to die, so just bring units. Um, it's, a good back row unit is actually Sophia if you have her. You can bring Sophia. If you don't have Sophia, Lena's also a good unit. I believe she's on this account. Here, so. so you can bring both of them. In case you lose a character and stuff, they can come and revive your main character and you'll be fine. So. Be perfectly fine if you lose a character, then bring them in and you wouldn't have to worry much about them. Their job is just to revive the units that die in the front row. Mainly your main character though, because the main character already had to revive, but they're there just to revive the units. Now, with that done, we're gonna be looking at the summons. Now, summons, this is very, very open. Now, depending on your LE, you may wanna bring very key summons. Howlin' Mal's a very good summon to bring on light because he does hit debuff, uh, the attack and defense it down, turn one, only on light though. So this is a good summon for light, Good summon for wind would be like Grimnir. Uh, fire has the the fire summon, the four star Satyr. I think I forget what it's called, but it, they have that. But that's only a four star. I believe she hits attack and defense down, stackable. So that that's not really accessible by new players. Um, so I don't remember what summons fire has off the top of my head, but summons like that will be okay. Water actually has Gabriel. If you have Gabriel, that's a very good option. You could throw it at 85 if you have water. Um, 
Earth doesn't really have much option outside of URL, really. URL is more of a damage boost, though, but it's a nice chain. Uh, if somebody changed the URL, that's not a bad chain at all. Alex is also a very good option if you have Alex. Uh, I believe that Bahamut and Lucifer. Now, Bahamut is not nearly as good as Lucifer. Lucifer helps a little bit more for you, while Bahamut helps more for the team. So if you want to bring those two as well, they're also okay as well. But generally, this is what you want to bring, and you can go from there. I'll, I'm going to put a bunch of summons in the list here, so you guys can see the summons that I did not mention. And we'll go from there. Now, once you have your setup all good to go, now you want to get into the fight. So, let's get to the fight. Now, before I get to the fight, uh, I wanted to mention one thing here. This is the summon that I'm going to be running here is actually sub Magna. I changed this so I can get a little bit more health for the team. And I'm, I'm pretty sure people are going to probably ask me about the pool. The pool is this here. There's a bunch of swords and random weapons to go in there. I'm not really too worried about the weapons. You may want to throw a Baja in here to get a little bit more health. You want to remove this. Let's just remove this real quick. Only from this party. So what you want to do here is you want to get as much health in your much health as possible while still having okay damage um depending on your LD, it depends on what weapons you have i don't know what's everybody's gonna run right i can't tell you what's gonna run and what's not to run but it just depends on what you have but you really want to emphasize health hp boosting is best because you're not going to really do damage anyways so what your job is to do is to support people so you want to go with more health boosting items I believe you're running with Song, Zoe, and things. So we bring up Bahamut Dagger, Sword, it's okay. I think we have two humans, actually. Okay. So you, want, you just want to get as much health as you possibly can. The Eden, I'm, I'm gonna remove all the free to play stuff because it doesn't matter. I mean, pay to win stuff. Uh, let's go, no, Bahamut. I guess I'm running two Bahamuts as it caps at 50 on the health boost. So I'm just, I'm just focusing on health boost right now. And we can go with get stuff. Stuff that's fine. That's fine. Does it, it doesn't really matter too much. What we're look, really looking for is just to live. <laughs> oh, we can also swamp this out with the Zeno Sword. As a maniac. As the Zeno Sword does give a little bit more damage as a maniac. Okay. So these are the summons we're going here with here. I ignore the Zeus. It doesn't really matter. And the team. So let's go on to co-op. Okay, now we are co-op, so you want to go to impossible, minimum rank 150, player type, it doesn't really matter, but I'll put anyone, generally you're only doing one host, which is your own, player limit 6, player ready check, always have it enabled, personally, um, you don't need to, but I generally always have it enabled, privacy, no requirements, now here, this is what I usually type in, so this right here is ultimate Bahamut, this is the rank, the rank number you're looking for, and the arrow points up means that they have to be above this threshold. And right here, you notice I have Thor. This stands for Thor, and this is the, the, when you're going to Thor, which is 70%. So that's a good way to get people to want to join your raid, even though you're a low rank. So we're going to post it into the room board. Now, this could take a minute for people to join. It really depends. That kind of hasn't even hosted the raid yet, actually, so be the first host. So what a good tactic is by going hide and display, depending on the time you're hosting, um, it'd be more likely for people to join, but it really depends. So I'm gonna probably cut this video off until I get people to join, and then I'll start again once I get people to join, even though we have two right now. So we'll see. Okay, I'm back, and I do have players to join. So a good thing is once you're selecting your party, you want to go to miscellaneous and look for Thor. If there's no Thor, you have to go in chat and type in Thor and put a question mark so people can put it. Though we happen to be lucky and someone has a Thor right here for us. So we're going to take our team in the request right now. A good thing is also to look at the player ranks just in case you never know. But a good thing is to look at the player ranks in case anybody's trying to sneak in at a lower rank, but generally you'll be okay. Make sure you're ready to click on and start the quest. Take a second. Okay. So 
So your job here is to be a debuffer. So at the very beginning, the first thing you want to do personally is apply debuffs. Nothing else really matters really at all. So we're going to go in here. We're going to use Song Petrified. Uh, nothing hit, unfortunately. So we're going to try to hit with John. Okay, nothing hit again. <laughs> now we try one more time with Mist. So we did hit debuffs there. We're going to call Howlin' Mal here to get some debuffs to on. Now, at this point, you really don't have to do anything at all. Oh wow, we got charge bargaining out of that. Okay, that's lucky. I mean, I would normally have used John skill two there, so I'll give you an example. Now, right here, you want to cast Phalanx for people. If there's no Phalanx, if somebody casts the Phalanx right there, you don't have to cast it. Now, at 25 by 75, you may want to take a turn. It really depends on how patient you are. You can just wait this out, actually, and just wait until 70. Because your job is just to apply Thor. So at 70, you want to cast Phalanx. If no one casts it, you can cast it perfectly fine. And then take your turn. So take your turn. To, it's to give your Thor backups in case. Now, generally people will stamp here for their uh, their stuff. If you see damage going out, then just throw out Thor. But generally people will throw a stamp down. Generally. Somebody cast Thor before me because they, 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 they speed, they're speed demons. I'm trying to teach you guys, right? So, <laughs> somebody would may throw a Thor out. If not, you would throw your Thor out. Um, you can also save your Thor if somebody throws out a Thor earlier on. So keep that in mind. Now, if you have enough turns, you somebody may have Phalanx there, but um, it's okay if someone does not Phalanx. Now you can take a turn at 50 here. You don't need to, but you can. If you want to be a little bit more active in the fight, you know, if you want to be more contribute, if you want to contribute a little bit more, you can take a turn, but you don't need to. I'll recommend personally skipping this uh, 40 as you're just taking damage you don't really need to take at all. Also, don't be scared to use pots at all from the damage you take from 50. You can always just wait until the 35. Wait for somebody to push it. So you can use this Ogi do a little, to do a little bit, you know, to look good. <laughs> so you don't feel completely useless, but you know, hey man, as long as you get your host in, that's all that really matters, right? Nothing else matters at that point. So you can get some buffs in. You can try, you can try to take some turns. If you have Sonic here, you can try to apply Paralyze if you didn't apply it earlier. I'm gonna go for it right now, see what happens. If it hits, cool. If it doesn't, it's cool as well. We did hit it, so we're gonna take a turn here. It's not gonna do much. Uh, we do have Zoe up, but you know, if you don't have Zoe, it'd be a different situation, right? So it really depends on what team comp you have and what units you're gonna bring. Now at this point, you're just, you're just chilling. You, you really don't have to do much. Um, you're just gonna wait until 10. Now you can always just pod and go into the 10 if you wanna be a little bit more proactive, as I said. If you wanna be more part of the team and feel like you're doing stuff, you don't really have to, but if you really wanna feel like you're doing something, you know? You don't have to worry about it too much though. And I believe this is the end of the fight right here. Yep, so that's a quick run right there. It's the general idea you wanna bring when you're coming into this raid. This how to support the team because you're not, you don't have to do much. All you gotta do is just bring debuffs and support everyone else. The people who have the damage, your job is to support their damage. So hopefully it's a good video and you guys can learn something from it. Um, if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. And let's see what we got a gold bar for. We leave. Because <laughs> you probably were, you probably curious if we got the gold bar or not. We did not. So, rip. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.